Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with a scripture from the Lord. We are in Isaiah 58 verse 10. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for hammering it into us. Thank you for being like a loving and diligent parent who wants to make sure the best is happening for his children and that we're setting ourselves up for a great future in you. We love you. We thank you for the work. We thank you for the love. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. Thank you for purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, I just got done doing the ox um, dream. And as I'm sitting here praying, I can see the ox's face. And so I just think that that's so pertinent to what this scripture is right now. So thank you, Lord, for that. Keep in mind, the ox represents the work, right? Getting out there and doing the work of the Lord, being a worker for him, right? At, in this harvest, it says the, um, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. We need to labor in the harvest. We need to pray to the Lord of the harvest that he send forth the laborers, right? So that's all a part of our calling. We need to be in those prayer closets, actively praying for more laborers, being the laborers that he has called us to be as well. All right. So the scripture of the Lord is Isaiah 58, 10. We did 58 before. Remember, this was such a key scripture. I remember um, teaching on this and then going to church that Sunday and the pastor preached on this. So the fact that God is bringing it back up is so wonderful because it really means that God is trying to hammer it home to us and tell us, hey, this is what's pertinent right now. So remember, Isaiah 58 10 was talking about the true fast that God really wants. We fast from these things to um try to, you know, bolster our flesh, help our flesh to subside and help our spirit to get strong. But God is saying here, I want more than that fast, right? I want you to fast from being evil. <laughs> I want you to fast from, from, from doing the wrong thing. I want you to fast from seeing your brother hungry and walking past him, right? That he's, he wants a true fast. He wants you to change your ways, right? So Verse seven, is it not, verse 10 is the scripture of emphasis, but we'll start at verse seven. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? If you see the people that you love and need, you should be going after trying to do your best do the work of the Lord. What is the Lord telling you? I'm not telling you to enable that person. I'm telling you to listen to the spirit, right? We must listen to the spirit and do as the spirit of the Lord is telling us to do. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, right? Yeah, you, it may feel like, hey, it's already cutting it close here in my house. But the thing is, if you have that scarcity mindset, you're always going to approach food and money and things like that with scarcity. And you never live in the abundance. You'll never live in the overflow because you're always looking at it as, as if you'll never have enough, right? You need to go out knowing that God is going to sustain that oil. He's going to sustain that flower. He's going to make sure that you are taken care of if you're out there doing his work. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover him? If you see that someone needs a home, if you see that someone needs a covering, if you see that someone is, is in need of a job and you know a job, right? You should go, you should be the hands of the Lord. You should do the work of an evangelist. You should go out and share the gospel, share what you have, share the resources that you have and do the work of the Lord. Verse eight, then shall your light break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. If you are facing a trial and a tribulation in your life, this is the prescription. This is what we were talking about before, the prescription for depression, this prescription for getting your healing, the prescription for, you know, these woes of our life. Sometimes they're being inhibited by our own 
selfishness. Sometimes they're being inhibited by the fact that we won't stop looking at ourselves and turn around and look at others. What need do you have, right? Sometimes I'm so into what I'm going through with this big old belly that I'm just like, uh, and it's hard to remember sometimes that other people have needs. I have to step out of myself sometimes and address the needs of others, right? That can be the best prescription for what you're going through at times. It says, then shall your light break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up speedily right? Your light is going to break forth when you stop looking in the mirror and, and saying, what was me? And turn around and look and see the person who's, who's hurting, who's, who's in need, who, who you might actually have to get up and go and try to make time in your day for, right? Uh, you know, <laughs> We've all been there where we're on our lunch break and we're, we're trying to, you know, get our lunch break in, get our little moment in. I used to go to sleep in my car sometimes when I worked at this one specific place. And, you know, you see someone in need, right? And it's like, I only get 30 minutes. You know, you, you have that mindset like, Lord, why do you really want me to do this? And so you have to step out of yourself. You have to let your light break forth like the dawn so that your healing can spring up speedily. And sometimes your healing can just be strength, right? For God to come in and strengthen you, to uphold you and keep you in the way that you are going, right? So that you can have energy to go and finish your day and do the things that he wants you to do right? And sometimes that is not going to come forth until you stop looking at you and start looking out for what he wants you to do. Your righteousness shall go before you, right? The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Who is your righteousness? Christ Jesus is our righteousness, right? So if we are found in him, he's going to shine forth before us. He's going to go before us. He's going to comfort us. He's going to protect us. He's going to be our shield. We have the breastplate of righteousness, right? So we can walk in that when we stop focusing on ourselves, stop being on the defense and get on the offense, go forth, right? In battle, go forth forth not in fear but in in faith right and that 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 breeds that righteousness because you're not depending on self you're depending on the lord and what he wants you to do so your righteousness shall go before you the glory of the lord shall be your rear guard not only is kind of god going to go before you he's going to back you up right so, so when people look back and say, what was that? All they're going to see is the glory of the Lord. You're bringing God's glory to the earth, right? They may not even remember your faith, but someone came and helped me in my time of need. And I know that was the Lord. They may not be able to remember exactly what happened 10 years from now, but they will know that God met their need. God came forth from them for them. He broke forth in their darkness someone came out of themselves and came and lifted them up right and that's all that matters you bringing glory to God your Lord right it says the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard right when they look back to say who was that what was that they should see God right that that that's just such a beautiful scripture verse 9 then you shall call and the lord will answer you shall cry and he will say here i am if you take away the yoke from your midst the pointing of the finger the speaking of wickedness so god is saying i'm not going to hide myself from you I'm not going to hide from your call. I'm not going to turn away from you. Why? Because you're facing me. You're facing away from sin. You're facing away from wickedness. You're facing away from trying to pull the splinter out of someone's eye when you have a plank in your eye, right? You're, you're, you're breaking the yoke from other people's necks and you are turning towards him. It says, then shall you call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here am I. When is this? When you stop looking at self, when you stop looking at your circumstances, when you stop looking at the storm that you're in and you start helping people in the storm, you start addressing their needs, even though you have needs that are very similar, right? 
It says, then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here am I. It's like saying, I'm putting my trust in you, God. So now I'm going to go out and help others. I'm leaning and depending on you to solve these problems that I have that I cannot solve. And I'm just going to go out and where I can be your hands, Lord, let me be your hands. Lord God, help me to go forth and do as you would have me to do. Because looking at me, is not going to solve any of my situations, right? Doing the same thing that I've been doing is not going to solve my situation. What's going to solve my situation is to look at other people's situations, say, how can I be of help to you, Lord? How can I be of service to you today, Lord? Amen. So it says, then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and the speaking of wickedness. When you take those things away, naturally you're stepping out and that's a fast. Naturally you're dropping some things and you're able to pick up some things. You can pick up people. You can pick up their circumstances. Why? Because I'm choosing not to criticize that person. I'm choosing to lift them up from the ground, right? Thank God that he did the same for you. Thank God that he was patient enough with you to to reach out to you and lift you from the ground. Amen. So it says, then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and the speaking of wickedness. Verse 10 is the scripture of emphasis. If you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness and your gloom be as the noonday. Wow. If you pour yourself out for the hungry, you see someone's hungry. It could be physical hunger. It could be a homeless person. It could be a a person who has a spiritual hunger, right? And they're they're manifesting it in a bunch of different ways, maybe even in ugliness towards you. That's hunger. That's a spiritual hunger. If you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness. How is your light rising in the darkness? If you are lifting Christ up, he is drawing all men unto him. He is doing that work, right? But all you have to do is pour yourself out. Stop focusing on you. Focus on him, right? This water that he gives us, this wellspring of life that we tap from, we are ever, ever receiving. And therefore, we should be able to ever give of that wellspring of life, which is Christ Jesus, and satisfy the desire of the afflicted. If you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in darkness. Your light is going to rise in darkness, even though that job or that circumstance that you're living in is a dark one, your light can rise in darkness. God can cause you to shine and break forth, right? But first, it's going to take you turning away from you and turning towards what he's telling you to do. And the key is, you know, you have to hear from the Holy Spirit. You have to be able to open your ears and close yourself off, turn your voice off and what you think is the right thing to do and wait on him. Sometimes that just takes lingering, right? Waiting on the Lord, trying to see, okay, Lord, what are you telling me to do? Because I don't want to step out on me. Show me if if I'm being stubborn, if I just can't hear because of my flesh, show me in a dream, show me some way, Lord God, and he's going to do it. He is faithful to do what he said he would do. Then shall your light rise in the darkness and your gloom be as noonday. What is noonday? Noonday is light, right? Your darkness is going to turn to light. Why? Because you're walking in the light, you're abiding in the light, and the light is Christ Jesus. He has sent his Holy Spirit, and he wants us to walk in the light, right? All right, you guys, God is telling us to focus ourselves, focus our work in these last days, pour ourselves out for the hungry, and satisfy the desire of the afflicted. Then shall your light rise in darkness and your gloom be as noonday. That is verse 10. That is the scripture of emphasis for today. I pray that it has blessed you. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for your will for us. Thank you for 
even us when we're stubborn you don't give up on us when we're hardened you don't give up on us you just intercede for us until we soften back up you just intercede for us until we turn back to you and ask for forgiveness from you lord we love you you're a great and mighty father we give you all the glory and the honor in jesus mighty name amen if you would like to receive jesus as your savior and lord Go ahead and pray this prayer with me, but more than saying the words, believe them with your heart. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Forgive me for my sins, Jesus. They are many. I've let myself for long enough. Sit on the throne of my heart and lead me and guide me. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and you rose again on the third day. I make you my Lord and Savior. I believe you are the Son of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, then God has covered you in your sins. The Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is residing in you regardless of how you feel. And that transformation is beginning to take place in you. And the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into all truth. He's going to help you make in all decisions in your life, just every decision, whether to go right or left and when to go, who to go with, you know, who to marry, what job to take. The Holy Spirit can help you with all of that because it's, it leads you and guides you into all truth. So just remember that it's there. Don't not don't make it feel unwelcome in you by ignoring what it's telling you to do the holy spirit is trying to help you but you can trace in the spirit and cause it to be dissipated in your life if you are not sober and vigilant and you don't um, heed the words of the holy spirit so he's going to show you a church home to join where you can go and be sharpened with other believers and be sharpened in the faith and he's just a, a wonderful guide in our lives. So God is good. Keep on doing the work of the Lord while it is still day. For night is coming when no man can work. So we have time to work. He's obviously giving us a scripture of emphasis about the work. So keep it up. And hey, one of these days it's going to be a glory, glory, right? And we're going to meet each other in the clouds. So if you would like to rededicate your life to Christ, just pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, bring me back to you. Bring my heart back to you. Bring my mind back to you. How many get back on this narrow path? In Jesus' name, I pray. Receive me like the prodigal son back into your arms. Forgive me of my sins. I turn away from them. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I love you guys. I'm praying for you. I hope you all are well and that God is blessing you and your family. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.